As many of you have been telling us, and we have been reporting, whether it's housing, insurance, food, your gas bill, rising costs are pricing many people out of paradise. WPTV anchor Jay Cashmere is live in downtown West Palm Beach with the first of a month long series of stories that dissects the volatility of living in South Florida. Jay. Volatile indeed, Michael and Tanya. The South Florida financial landscape is full of landmines. It's sticker shock at every turn for renters, buyers, and owners. But it's not just housing. As you can see, they can't build it fast enough here in West Palm Beach. It is the cost of living that keeps going up. The price of living in paradise due to inflation. So many are forced to make tough decisions to live and work and put food on the table. We are growing our commitment to our ongoing series, Price Set of Paradise, starting tonight. How did we get here? How are people navigating and what are the real solutions for you at home? South Florida. Our backyard has become quite an attraction. A thousand people a day are coming to the state according to realtors. All looking for palm trees, beaches, and a quality of life unmatched anywhere else. Everything just went higher and higher. Try selling that to Sandra Lanowich. We're at the point where we might actually have to move out of the state because realistically we can't. We just can't afford to live here. She and her husband rent in Palm Beach Gardens. Three years of searching for a home left them priced out. Rent is stable, but for how long? Now inflation has stretched their bottom line. I'm now in the market. I never realized how, like, the budget from like 1950s, I'm like, I'm gonna write this down. We're not spending any more than this. Like, you wanna go out to eat? No. Gas prices are fueling frustration. Groceries are biting into the budget. Home insurance rates are through the roof. And our real estate market still can't keep up with demand. This is definitely very different than anything we've ever seen. For 11 years, Compass Realtor Katie Ronsley has sold thousands of properties. Now with less homes and more buyers, she says don't expect the market to change anytime soon. We still have very little inventory. We have less than a month of inventory, uh, which I think normal is about three months. So until that starts to grow, I don't see this slowing down. In fact, an underpriced two bedroom house in Palm Beach Gardens with an asking price of $335,000 has already had an astonishing 31 offers. 25 of which are cash. We had many, many more people coming down, high wealth individuals who learned that they can work from anywhere. Cash buyers who compete against local residents. Right now, developers in communities like Alton and Jupiter can't build fast enough, driving many locals who are looking north. I found that I was getting a lot more uh, bang for my buck if I came up in here to Martin County. Uh, Brooks Feaser left a high-priced rental in Jupiter. It's, it's quiet, it's out of the chaos. After losing 12 offers on other homes to cash buyers, he closed on this three-bedroom, two-bath Hope Sound home in February for $430,000. The sale price of the house is scary, you know, will I, will I get upside down on this? Um, I will work hard to try to make sure that doesn't happen. With the security of owning a home comes the reality of paying for it. This boat captain is working 14 hour days, seven days a week to make ends meet. It was a bad time to rent, it was a bad time to buy. I had to choose between the two evils. Hard choices are pending for thousands of others across South Florida, trying to navigate a cutthroat housing market grappled with record inflation. The sand and surf that once greeted them on arrival now leaves a paralyzing view that sunshine may be dimming on paradise. Because we love the area, we fell in love with South Florida, but South Florida hasn't loved us back just yet. <laughs> so. Now in the coming days and weeks, we will explore every angle of how we are all being priced out of paradise from housing, insurance, food, and what you're doing to make ends meet. So how did we get here? Florida was once a beacon for affordable living and an oasis for retirement. We're going to peel that layer back tomorrow at 6 o'clock as we are committed to our ongoing month-long series, Priced Out of Paradise. Good evening, Michael and Hani from Lake Okeechobee here where you can see over my shoulder storms have fired up. The perfect backdrop for instability and an ominous forecast. And that's exactly how you can describe the housing crisis here in the Glades. A much different look than 50 miles to my east from where I'm standing along the dense population of the coastline. 
We recently spent some time with county leaders and homeowners out here trying to find a bright spot. An hour west of downtown West Palm Beach, rural real estate comes into focus. The glades have always had a huge impact on Palm Beach County's economy. Dense crops and sugarcane are firmly planted in the muck that wraps the western side of Lake Wichita. 60,000 people call this place home. I come down here every muck bowl. Including 26-year-old Mykeria Evans. I grew up in Pahokee. She's been homeless for the better part of four years. I never thought I'd have to go through something like this, but unfortunately I'm in this situation. I'm trying to get out of it. She's living in Lake Village at the Glades, the only Palm Beach County owned transitional housing here that offers a temporary roof over her head and hope that a permanent one comes soon. It's very hard. Everything is moving very slow right now. Each person works with the local housing authority to find a rental or a home. But it's not as easy out here, considering many turn a blind eye to a big problem. When I go and I talk in Washington and say I'm from Palm Beach County, nobody believes this is here. And nobody from the coast really travels out here. And so out of sight, out of mind. Palm Beach County Commissioner Melissa McKinley has seen the worst of blight in her district. Take, for instance, Joe Lewis Apartments. She and the county recently condemned this place when black mold and sewage dripping into kitchen sinks made a toxic situation unlivable. The landlord racked up $350,000 in fines and has yet to pay, according to McKinley. Fifteen families suddenly found themselves homeless. When we talk about the housing crisis in South Florida, how is it different here in the Glades? The housing here is it's old. Uh, the families out here are living in poverty. Uh, there's not a lot of inventory. McKinley here says a multitude of problems make this crisis different from the coast. <laughs> She says 40% of the population is below the poverty level. Most of the housing here is old, built before 1979, and a base of residents are seasonal who work in the fields every year. The problem that I have here is if we shut something down, we're limited in, in where we can place somebody temporarily until we can find a new living situation for them. That could be changing long term. Across town, this old abandoned school will soon become affordable workforce housing. This is Glade View Elementary. Jonathan Brown, Palm Beach County's Director of Housing and Economic Development, says this example can save the Glades from the housing crisis. We estimate that there are going to be about 65 single family homes, 10 acres, um, $29, $30 million project. Palm Beach County School District no longer needed the land. It's about to be demolished and bidding for a developer is underway. In two years, this site will open, bringing real opportunity to people like this single mom. To be able to know that I don't have to struggle, I don't have to worry about living in a shelter, I don't have to worry about where me and my child is going to lay our head at. But tonight, I got a place where I have the keys to, I'm able to sleep at night peacefully. Owning a home, it is the American dream. Try telling that to millennials. Palm Beach County's fierce housing market has made it virtually impossible for this group to not only find a home, but buy a home. And that's why areas like right behind me here in Port St. Lucie in tradition in St. Lucie County, they are booming with pre-construction right now, booming with development. We're live right now off Southwest Village Parkway and Becker Road in Port St. Lucie. Chopper 5 giving you a bird's eye view of all the growth in this area, all the pre-construction and development that's taking place. All these younger families are migrating north to this area along the Treasure Coast for one thing, more affordable housing. In tonight's Price Out of Paradise report, I caught up with a local couple, a young couple, newly married. They live in Royal Palm Beach. They live with her parents, and they're watching their dream of owning a home vanish day by day. Take one glance down the skyline in West Palm Beach. Palm trees, beaches, and a hot real estate market dot the landscape. Palm Beach County virtually sells itself and has quickly caught the attention of buyers around the country. It is scary. It is really scary when we look at these prices. Rebecca Lucatero and her husband Eric, both in their mid-20s, saw their dream of owning a home and went after it. The closer you get to where everyone is at, the higher it is. Then came reality. Home after home, offer after offer. It's just infuriating because I don't I don't know how we're supposed to move on and 
create the life that we want with the circumstances that are currently going on. Both are millennials who are part of a growing trend in Palm Beach County real estate. That is the dream. You want your white picket fence yeah. and your kids and your stable job. They're getting priced out and pushed out. Data from research group FilterBuy shows only 9.1% of homeowners in West Palm Beach are under 35 well below the national average. So if you're a millennial getting a mortgage right now, it's really challenging because A, we're in the hottest market of our generation has ever seen here, and B, you're up against cash buyers. Realtor Holly Meyer Lucas walked us through the over. agonizing process for this generation and the frenzy when a house like this one in Tequesta comes on the market. So how hard is it right now for those under 30 to really tap into this market? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's really hard. So this one, we had, you know, we have 14 offers on it already, and of those, 12 are snowbirds with cash. In fact, she says six months ago, there would have been 40 offers, a sign that buyer fatigue could be setting in, which works to a millennial's advantage. The amount of time a house sits on the market is another sign. Holly says don't give up. A lot of factors contribute to its length of stay on the MLS. If you're a millennial and you see a home that has been sitting for 10 days, don't assume that it's because it's overpriced or not a great house. For the Lucateros, it's become so frustrating. Just watching market inventory is depressing. If we try to envision that, we're just going to start um, making ourselves feel bad. It's sad because I feel like at our age, we're not where we're supposed to be at all. A young couple representing so many millennials with a goal to simply own a home for the first time in their lives. Yet realizing each day it's unrealistic when you're competing in one of the most aggressive markets in the country. Everyone wants to be a dreamer, but at some point you have to let it go to live this American dream of pursuing what you want to do, but you have to sleep on someone's couch.